James, you have been to heaven many times, actually hundreds of times. Is that true? That is true, yes. Okay, now I would imagine if you're like at a party and you tell somebody that, you'd get some strange looks. <laughs> oh, I've received many strange looks, <laughs> and I've looked strangely at other people. <laughs> Before I began to experience this, it just didn't sound real. Yeah. But I want to tell you, it's real. Now, let's, let's jump right into one of those experiences. Uh, there was one time you were, it was in the morning, you were worshiping, you were praying, and you visited the secret place of the Most High. Now, tell me what that, well, walk me through that. What happened first? Uh, I think the first thing that happened was I just uh, really felt the glory of God, the heavy, weighty presence of the Lord, and it, I literally was pushed to the floor. Hmm. And on the floor, I was face down, and I began to pray. And, I, and um, suddenly, I was no longer in the room. I was in another place, and I didn't recognize the place, had no idea what it was, but I was uh, standing and I was looking in the face of a really ugly demonic figure, hmm. and he was trying to threaten me, and uh, I was not afraid. Now, I don't, I don't picture demonic when I think of heaven. Was this, <laughs> was this in heaven? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. No, this, he was outside the door, okay. and at this point I was too. All right. And so he was trying to block me from being able to see the door into the secret place. So I asked the Lord to rebuke him, and he was gone. Okay. And uh, that was good news. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then I could see the door clearly, and it was uh, something that would be impossible to open. It was a large arched wooden door, but it had hinges on both sides. There was no handle, there was no doorknob. Okay. And it appeared by human uh, methods, there was no way that anyone could open that door without breaking it. And it was so heavy, that would not have been possible for me to do. So I just uh, prayed and asked um, the Lord for help. And suddenly, the door swung open. And yeah. I was literally drawn through the door. <laughs> and um, I went in through the door into what now I could see was like a large, huge oak tree, and it was hollowed out inside, and the door, you went right into the middle of that huge tree, and in the middle of the room, there was a chair, and I saw this white cloud coming down the stairs uh, behind it, and then coming in kind of a column of white cloud uh, set up on the chair. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that that was the Lord, and I went down on my knees, my face I down in front yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. And uh, so um, suddenly, I was pulled back out of the door. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> this was unexpected. Did you feel like you did something wrong? Or? That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm going back out of the door, and it wasn't like I was walking, I was just being drawn out of the door. I started praying, did I do something wrong? Did I say the wrong thing? Uh, am I not in the right attitude? And the, the Holy Spirit then spoke to me and said, nope, I'm trying to teach you something. I want to teach you how you move with the Lord. Hmm. You don't push. You don't do it your way. You don't struggle against the Lord, but you let Him pull you into His presence. And so in that room, the Lord began to give me some very specific directions about something He wanted me to do. And uh, part of it was to write a book. Hmm. Well, I had never written a book before. I don't like writing. <laughs> this was not like good news for yeah. me. <laughs> and so I really wrestled with that. I'd like to be able to say, you know, I, I did the right thing. You know, I spoke up to him, yes, Lord, I will obey. It wasn't like that at all. I mean, all, every human tendency in me just comes out. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to resist, but the Lord said, I'm telling you to do it. And if you don't do it, judgment will come. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was in the military for almost 30 years, so I stood at attention and saluted and said, yes, sir, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm How ready. many books have you written now? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you definitely took that seriously. <laughs> well, he keeps giving me new assignments. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, this place that you just described, you called it the secret place of the Most yes. High. Um, 
Was that it, or did you ever move beyond that? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, and I want to say also that uh, I made a mistake early on, and the way I told the story, people thought they had to go to that tree. Okay. And you don't have to go to that tree. That may not be what your secret place with God looks like. You let God take you where God wants to take you, and mm -hmm. you just move with Him. So the tree was for me. And right. I, sometimes I say it's because I'm a knothead. <laughs> he did the tree. So I got a lot of training there, and I went back every day for uh, almost three weeks. You went back every day? Yes. Okay. To that same place. And it was the same way, the door opened, the same way I was taken into the place. And the Lord told me what He wanted me to write in His book. And His book was to tell people that heaven is open, and that he really wants people to come and visit him, and he wants to be able to face-to-face -face give you directions, his plan for your life, your purpose, your destiny, that he would speak that directly to you. Now, when you were there, did you, did you want to just stay? I mean, <laughs> is that an option? <laughs> this is a touchy point for my wife. <laughs> One time I did ask to stay. <laughs> and I was told, but you're in the body. The only way you can stay is if you die. And I said, no problem. <laughs> if I could be in that place for eternity, I'm ready to give up the body. Wow. But my wife doesn't like me deserting her that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about another experience you had. This was in the throne room. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Okay, actually, I went back to the tree. Okay. Went through the door. Right. And I was told to go up the steps that were behind the chair. Hmm. And I got to a higher vantage point, and I looked up, and I could see heaven open. Wow. And Yeshua, Jesus, was standing right there at the first step into the heaven. And... Um, I wanted to call him to come down here and fix some of the stuff that's wrong on yeah, earth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we he, need you down here. <laughs> but he said, no, I've already done that. Now it's your turn to do it. <laughs> okay. And then he said something to me that I, I've always wished that I could uh, repeat. He told me, come up here. And I can't even uh, come close to his voice. Mm. There was absolute command authority, yet there was total love. There was grace. There was all of those things, and yet the words were, I knew an absolute command when he said, come up here, and I was instantly in heaven. Hold that thought, James. We're going to come back in just a moment. We're going to find out more about the throne room, and then we're going to also talk about shopping in heaven. Yes, you heard right, shopping in heaven. Join us again in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. I'm Bob Duvall. I'm here with James Durham. And James, before we took the break, we were in the throne room of heaven. What an awesome place. Tell me what that was like, what you saw, what you experienced. Okay. It's, it's really, um, it's such an um, otherworldly kind of experience that in ways it's hard to describe. Uh, yeah. But I'd always heard that uh, Yeshua sat at the right hand of the Father. And I always mm -hmm. imagined that the thrones were kind of like this. Yeah. But what I found is they're like this. Huh. And it's on the right side, and the big part of the room is over here, but they face each other. They never take their eyes off of each other. Mm. They're connected totally in heaven. And um, I was told... Uh, Three times by the Holy Spirit, do not walk between the Father and the Son. Okay. Nobody steps in that place. Huh. So that was a sacred place. And uh, I saw Jesus, uh, and I was in such awe of Jesus that I literally almost froze up because he was so awesome. And I could just feel uh, the power of the Spirit that was in him. And where I was standing, I was uh, behind one of the pillars around his throne. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. pillar blocked most of my view of the Father. Hmm. And there was a reason for that, because the Father has like a pulse. And it's like power, it's like love, but it's hmm. so strong, I literally was crushed. Hmm. And I uh, gave my normal prayer, more, Lord, more. <laughs> it hurts so good. <laughs> and so the Lord said, you can't take any more. You're in the body if you got more. Mm. 
you would die. And I said, no problem, then I can stay here. <laughs> <laughs> now looking around, like, uh, did you see angels? Oh yes, okay. oh yes. <clears throat> and um, this kind of came as a, a, a continuous revelation. And I saw what I think John was describing when he said there were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> it's at least 102 or 4 million, right? Oh Angels. <laughs> and uh, it's hard to picture that in your mind. Mm -hmm. And so as they were around the Father giving praise and worship, they started to glow like they were on fire. And the ones closest to Him kind of caught on fire first. <laughs> And then there were just like flames of fire. And I think the Bible says his messengers are flames of fire. And these angels were flames of fire. And then they began to light up more and 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 more. Uh, this just went on and on and on. And yeah. as far as I can mm. see, angels were around the Father glowing with his glory. Mm. Uh, on fire with the fire of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Their praise just lit them up like... Uh, you had uh, started a, not just a candle, but a raging fire. Mm -hmm. And it was so amazing. Mm -hmm. And I was standing over in the area where Jesus was located. Mm -hmm. And what really surprised me is it wasn't very light around Jesus. Really? And the message I got is that the church has not really fully committed to praise and worshiping Jesus. And instead of being fully committed to that, they're running programs, they've got plans and activities, and they're doing all of these good things, mm -hmm. but sometimes they forget the best thing. The best thing is like Mary, who stood in the presence of Jesus. Martha was busy doing chores, but Mary hung out with Jesus. And I think that um, we need to get into a time when more of us just hang out with Jesus. Yeah and totally love Him, worship Him, and praise Him. And I found for myself that as in heaven, when I began to do that, I also caught on fire. Hmm. And I saw some other people around who caught on fire and as they praised Yeshua. And I looked at him like, is he disappointed because all those are behind the Father and he's not, is he jealous? Yeah. There wasn't a jealous bone in his body because in his eyes, I could almost see that he was looking to the future and he was looking to the day of the great wedding feast of the Lamb mm -hmm. in heaven when his church would gather around him and give him that pure praise and glory and light up the whole area in their worship of him. Mm -hmm. Now, James, there was a time where you had a visit to heaven and you call it pre-opening shopping. You know, there's there's these stores that if you're like a, a special customer or whatever, you might be able to get into the store ahead of time and get the best sales and everything. Describe that visit to heaven, the pre-opening shopping. Okay, well, I was, uh, first of all, I was in this house. It was a very beautiful house with all kinds of antiques, and I just kind of got caught up in looking at all the antiques. That's what I do too often. I get caught up in things, <laughs> you know, and, and then suddenly mm -hmm. a big uh, portal or opening in the wall opened up and I was just drawn right through it. And when I was, I went to, into this store and it looked to me like a, a department store, really huge, long aisles, shelves full of everything that you could imagine. And, uh, but the lights were off and there were some people waiting in line outside, but I was with a group that was inside mm. and we were allowed to shop now. And uh, so I, I saw one woman, she picked up some detergent Mm -hmm. I expected it to be laundry detergent, but sure. it, it said on the box, save your suds. Save your suds. <laughs> save your suds. Okay. And that this was a, a redeeming compound. Yeah. And so she suddenly just transfigured before my eyes. She was healed. She was restored. Wow. She was like new. And then a man picked up this box and it had different kinds of anointing oil in it. And I saw on the edge of the box that it was for healing and restoration. Mm. And as soon as he mm. took hold of that oil, you could see everything in him that was not right was made right. And he began to smile, the pain was gone, mm. all of the infirmities mm. were gone, and he was whole again. And then I saw a man uh, who was getting dresses. <laughs> and I thought, no, well, that's kind of strange. Yeah. I didn't understand <laughs> that at all. So then, then the Lord showed me this same man riding on a train and he was looking at those dresses again. And the Lord said, he's going to the mission field and he's taking the garments of heaven with him. 
to release to the people who accept Jesus. Wow. And this was so awesome. And uh, so this was like the storerooms of heaven. Yes, it was one of them, he said. One of them. One of them. <laughs> Is that something all of us who are believers can access? Yes, we can. Okay. And uh, heaven is open all the time. We act as if it's closed, but heaven is open all the time. The thing that's closed is our eyes and our ears and our heart to perceive. But we need to go beyond that. We need to break free from those limitations that have been put on us in the past. People, well-meaning people, have told us things that are not accurate. Mm -hmm. And so we've limited our experience of the supernatural. We've limited our experience of heaven. But God wants us to know heaven is open all day, every day. <laughs> Amen. James, we're going to take one more quick break. When we come back, we're going to hear about another visit to heaven that James calls ready or not. Come back in just a moment. Welcome back to something where we're so glad you're still joining us. And this has been so interesting, James, these visits to heaven. But you know, some people might be wondering, is this scriptural? Is this in alignment with the Bible? What would you say to that? I would say it absolutely is from Genesis to Revelation. In uh, Genesis, uh, heaven opened and uh, Jacob saw the ladder and he saw the angels right. ascending and descending and, and um, all kinds of people heard uh, the voices of heaven because it said heaven opened. And then we see Jesus saying to Nathaniel, you shall see heaven open and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, which means you're going to see him. You will see the angels around Yeshua. And then Paul had a third heaven visitation and John saw the open door and uh, he was called up into heaven and got this huge revelation, which is the last book in the Bible. So I think from the opening cover to the closing cover, these are very scriptural. Okay. Now, uh, let's, let's jump to, to one more visit to heaven where you saw like poking down through the clouds, this giant silver colored shower head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me about that. And tell me what that really was. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, many times I've had this experience where I'm lifted up near heaven, but not yet in heaven, and I see portals open. Hmm. And then I seek to move through one of those into heaven. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, because it's up to the Lord, it's not up to me. Hmm. And I want everybody to know this is not something special about me. This is for everybody. Everyone can have these experiences if we're just open and ready to believe. Mm -hmm. But I was totally surprised to see this uh, big silver, which I thought at first was a shower head, <laughs> just break through the clouds up yeah. above me <laughs> and come down and it was pointing toward Earth. And I thought, well, maybe Earth's about to get a bath. <laughs> maybe they need some cleansing, mm -hmm. some refreshing. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. But then I could see more clearly and I saw that this was not really a shower head. It was a giant silver trumpet, huge mm. silver trumpet. And before I could really process all of that, it kind of went away and a very large figure wearing a, a prayer shawl had a shofar and it was coming up to his lips as he was ready to release the sound of the shofar. And uh, what I heard the Lord saying was that there are two, two uh, shofars, two trumpets, and there are two meanings to this. One was that we need to be processing right now, getting ready for the Feast of uh, Tabernacles and for the Feast of Trumpets. Now, some people say, why would I do that now? That's not until September. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the time to prepare. And there are so many preparations in that season that have to be done in the homes and the businesses and everywhere. It's a busy time. But sometimes we're not so busy. The Lord wants us to get ready for that feast in the natural so that we can connect with Him. These are, these are the appointed times. We have an appointment with God. I don't want to be late for an appointment. I don't want to miss an appointment. If God invites me, I want to be there. And so the trumpet was letting us know it's time to get ready. And then the uh, second thing is we're about to hear that last great trumpet mm. when uh, heaven opens and mm. an angel descends and blows that trumpet of the Lord and we are called up in the air to meet him in the air. And so I think time is short. And what the Lord was saying, we need to get ready. You don't have hundreds of years. John in his first uh, little letter wrote in the Bible that um, we're living in the last hour. Mm. 
And he says it twice in the same verse. He begins and ends with, we're living in the last hour. And I thought, if, we're, if he was living in the last hour, what time is it now? Yeah, so ready or not, here he, here comes. he comes. Yes, okay. and that's what he said. And he yeah. said, I am coming soon, and my people are not ready. Now, James, you mentioned a moment ago that this, this is for everyone. Yes. These, these visits to heaven. Um, and for the person who's watching us right now, and they, they, you know, they maybe don't know how, or, you know, they're open, would you pray for them okay. right now that they would have the same experience as you have had? I mean, it, God's no respecter of persons. No. Nope. And he's saying, come up here. So pray for, <laughs> pray for them right now. Yeah, and I just, uh, as you were getting ready to say that, I was hearing in my spirit the Lord saying that again right now, that he's speaking through the, this uh, medium. He's speaking to people and saying mm -hmm. to people, <clears throat> come up here now. Mm -hmm. It's your time. It's your season. And I just pray that the Lord will take away every roadblock in your life, in your um, uh understanding of the Bible, your understanding of doctrine, that the Lord is just remove all of that and awaken your spirit so that in your heart you can perceive the things of heaven, that with your eyes, I claim the promise of Nathaniel for everyone. The Lord says, you shall see heaven. And the ears, that you shall hear the voice of the Lord. The Lord said, my sheep hear my voice. And I just want to release that to everyone listening right now. The Lord is saying to you, you are my sheep. You can hear my voice and follow me. And I don't know how to do it. So I can't tell you that. I know how to position myself, and th but the Lord does it. And this is something we have to understand. The Lord does it for His purpose and for His kingdom. And it's just up to us to be willing to be obedient and follow Him. The biggest thing is willing to be obedient. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Have you been prov provoked to jealousy? I definitely have. Uh, so open yourself up. Be willing to take these visits to heaven. Press into God. Have your spiritual senses heightened so that you can hear and see and sense what God's doing, what He's telling you right now in this season. And most of all, if you don't know Him yet, turn to Him today. Today's the day. Don't put it off. And join us again next time for something more. Call now and get James Durham's revelatory eye-opening book, Alert, Perilous Times, A Prepper's Guide to the Last Days, and his exclusive two-part audio CD series, Top 10 Ways to Prepare for the End Times, plus his bonus audio CD, God's Next Prophetic Season. This is an exclusive offer for our rich supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9698. James Durham's book is your essential guide to getting spiritually prepared to have victory over these perilous times we are facing. Through this book, you will learn how to be biblically ready, prepped to go through the difficult times and be an overcomer. Discover how to not be fearful of the end times, but be prepared with faith, love, and supernatural power. Understand why you must not allow the enemy to block your ability to see into the spiritual realm. Understand how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit and live in the atmosphere of the glory of God. You will also receive James Durham's exclusive two-part audio CD series, Top 10 Ways to Prepare for the End Times. James will teach you how to be a spiritual prepper with the ability to navigate the perilous times ahead with supernatural faith, hope, and confidence. How to be prepared because this could be the last day. James includes powerful prayers to help you receive the anointing of the spiritual prepper. Prepper. Plus, you will receive his bonus audio CD, God's Next Prophetic Season. James Durham has received several third heaven dreams and visions regarding God's next prophetic season. He includes anointed prayers, including a prayer that no weapon can be forged against you, a prayer that the Lord would open your eyes, ears, and heart to perceive. He prays for your healing and gives you words of knowledge. Don't miss out on getting James Durham's revelatory eye-opening book, Alert, Perilous Times, A Prepper's Guide to the Last Days, and his exclusive two-part audio CD series, Top 10 Ways 
ways to prepare for the end times, plus his bonus audio CD, God's Next Prophetic Season. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9698. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9698 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.